Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. I wanna take a look at some of the trading methods that I use right now in FIFA Ultimate Team to make me coins on this game. It is a pretty simple and easy trading method. And in regards, just flipping special cards with fluctuations that happen with these cards every day or every couple days, um, on the market because we all know this market is it's a market it is uh, fueled by supply and demand and sometimes these cards have a little bit extra supply at some moment on the market it makes their price go down um, not even because of uh, some other thing coming out in the game but just a normal kind of activity period on the market where these card prices fluctuate where we can actually make coins and make profits off of this and as you saw um, probably in the thumbnail when you clicked on this video we had some screen cards in there, we had some informs in there, and that is what this trading method is based around. Rare out of packs cards. So these cards are not in packs anymore, they can't be supplied anymore, they have a fixed supply on the market, but there's still demand for these cards because people like them in their teams because uh, they're cool, they're upgrade, they have dynamic images and stuff like that. That's why people pay for these cards and they fluctuate a lot in the market because of that as well since they don't have any constant supply that's that's pushing their price into a, a, a certain place or uh, constant demand that is making their price stay in a certain place um, these cards fluctuate up and down a lot because at some moment you might have uh, 10 people on the market that want to sell their scream deli alley and right now it shows 235,000 coins to this card but they want them to sell and they get their coins right so let's say one guy lists it up 233 doesn't get a sale Another guy listed up 230, and they just keep undercutting each other. Maybe one or two of them sell, but the undercuts keep coming. And within a one hour period, maybe his price goes from 240,000 coins down to 220. And maybe you can get a snipe under that at like 219, 218, 217. But you know that that card will sell at another hour at some point during the day, whether it's overnight or whether it's even at some other random point in the day because you see his footprint graph say so. But you know that, that card can sell at around 240,000 coins, and you can p possibly pick up a card under 220k or right around 220 and sell it for 240 and make yourself some coins on just a daily flip of this card. So I want to kind of talk to you through this method over here on Footbin. And this, this is going to be huge for you guys to know what kind of cards to trade with and which ones are going to be the best to flip and to learn the prices of and to watch those prices as they fluctuate on the market. So the Scream Deli Alley card is a center mid in the Prem. He could play a center attack in mid, but he, he's like a perfect box-to-box uh, -box center mid with his statistics. Pretty good statistics, pretty good card, and he links to a lot of people because he's English, he's from Tottenham, a lot of, a lot of green links. Uh, especially inside of Premier League teams. Two uh, popular guys in this game, uh, like a Kyle Walker in form, Trent Alexander-Arnold in form, Sterling, Harry Kane, other English players in this game that people like to use. So let's take a look at Deli Alley's graph right now. It says on Footbin he has 239,000 coins. And I also want to preface this by saying, Footbin isn't always correct. So right here you see that Deli Alley reached a low point today of 220,000 coins. Footbin shows the average price over that hour. So Deli Alley could have actually been 215K on the market. Somebody could have listed one up for 215 and it shows 220, but there was actually one listed up at 215. Uh, and then the same thing goes for the high side. Right here, it says he was 239,000 coins, 236, 239. There might have actually been up the cheapest one on the market at that time, might have been like 242 or 241. Um, and you could have undercut at 240 or 239 to keep yours the lowest on the market and possibly get a flip on the sale. So what you can do to, not to notice these trends in these cards is you want to look for fluctuations during the day. It doesn't really matter what time of the day it normally is. Just if you see fluctuations, you know that you can watch that card and trade with it. So Deli Ali today reached 220K at his lowest point. At his highest point, he was 239. So at 240,000 coins, we're going to have 12,000 coins of tax. All right, 12,000 coins of tax. So that means we need to buy this Deli Ali card. If we can sell it at 240 at the peak of the daytime, where that means that we can uh, buy that card and make money on it um, after we take out that tax. So 240 minus 12,000 coins, 228,000 coins. So we probably want to buy around the 220 range or below so that we're even just making coins on the card. We want to make sure that we're making profit on these. You know, if you know that Deli Ali sells 
at 240,000 coins during the day, but you buy them at 225 and you sell them at 240, you're only making 3,000 coins profit. So again, you wanna make sure that you're making profit on these cards after tax. But back over here to the web page, let's check this out. So you wanna look at both days. Look at all the days on here. Look at the full day. So we look at Monday. He was pretty flat in price, 231K, 227, went up to 240. Okay, so maybe down here at the 227 time frame, um, there was an undercut for 221 or 222K, and then boom, the, out, the next hour he went up to 240. So that's how crazy these cards prices could move. It literally could happen within an hour where Delhi goes from 220 to 240, and you have an opportunity to flip that card. And again, overnight, 228. Into the next day, he rose up to 236, and that's where we saw that 220, and he's almost back now at 240, where we're looking at him on the market right now. So if, if, you, if somebody bought him in th for that 220 range, um, on the market when he was the lowest, he's almost back up to 240. Um, so that's that's kind of the basis of this flipping model um, that you're just basically looking at flipping graphs. I'm gonna look at another one over here, James Rodriguez. We're gonna look at these flipping graphs and kind of decipher, does this card fluctuate enough on a daily basis where I can buy it for a low when it's on the low for whatever reason and then sell it on the high? If there is that type of fluctuation in there, that could be a card that you want to flip with. Now, obviously, you want to look at cards that are meta, that are popular, like this um, Hamas Rodriguez with the massive pace boost over his gold card, 25 pace. So on Monday, he reached a low of 269 and a high of 287, 290K. Uh, 290, so maybe our sell point's like 280-something. Okay, 264 and 280-something. So that's kind of a profit range in there. But, you know, again, 264. Let's go check this card on flipping right now. Uh, it's or on the on the game. It says on Footbin that his price is 288,000 coins. Let's check and see if that is legit. Thomas Rodriguez right now on this game is 289,000 coins for this card at the moment. So we know that that is his. He's basically at like the the top range of his price right now. We could also look for bids on these cards. Um, bidding is definitely something that you can do with these to try to make some coins. It's going to be harder for some of these. Um, cards that maybe have a UCL item underneath them. So maybe what you just do is you compare price and just look at it this way. But I would say um, there is a compare price glitch like you saw right there where I press compare price and it would not show me all the listings. There are way more than just four, five, six cards of these on the market. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this one to my transfer targets. And when that card expires, when it's red, the, the transaction has ended. Over here on my transfer targets, I would keep a list of all these cards that you're trying to watch. And then compare price with the square button over here, because if you compare price on a card that is expired, that has the red X, it will show you all the listings of that card. Now, if you show, uh, if you compare price again on a card that is still live on the market, like this James, you might not always see all the listings again, like right here, we only see if the first page. So that's one thing to, to make a mental note of. Add these cards that you're watching to their transfer, to your transfer targets and watch them because you know, we want to know if Hamas sells at his, his highest point. Flippin might say he's 290, but does he actually sell there? That's a very important part of this as well. So again, I've been looking at screen cards. Another one I want to look at is Dimitri Payet. And you just kind of want to look at cards that are popular, that are meta, that people are going to actually use and try out in this game because some cards are not of that nature. I know Payet is an inform, so I want to try to make sure I don't see that inform in these searches, which I do, unfortunately. So it looks like Payette is somewhere around the realm of 70,000 coins. 67,000 coins for this uh, screen Payette. So let's go over here to Footbin and see what Payette looks like during the day. Payette during the day, 67 is a low. 67 is a low. His high is only 72. So there's not a lot of fluctuation with that card. 65 could be interesting. And 69. Go to the next day, 66, down to 65, 64 and almost back up to 70. So you see that this card might get into the mid to lower 60s, but it also has an opportunity to get up into the 70s or right over 70 as well. So like right now in the game, especially with a card like this, where you have the inform that's kind of making it hard to search for this card, you might be able to get a sale on one of these payettes at a little bit of a higher price just because it's harder to search that card. Like if we just clear it all and go search, Payette's got a lot of cards out here. See, so if you're looking in the market at like this, boom, there's one of the 65,000 coins as a base price. 70 is a buy now. Somebody might scroll through these cards and be like, all right, the cheapest one that I saw right there was uh, that 70K. So boom, 
That's what we call a lazy buyer. Boom, 70,000 coins. They pay, they pay the price for that one because it was the cheapest that they could quickly find. Um, but yeah, so the bidding on a card like this would be very good as well because it's going to get confused with the inform a lot and it's going to be hard to search. So if you can find some bids on one of these cards, that could be very beneficial as well. So maybe we scroll through here, look for some of the bids. Again, we have the, uh, the glitch with the compare price, which we are not able to see all the card prices, which is unfortunate. Hopefully EA fixed that. So I'm going to add this one at 70K. Boom, it gets a 65.5 bid right there at the end. So I would not bid on that card to go up because I don't think I can sell it for over 70K, which is where I'd have to sell it to make profit. But that's um, how we could watch that card. It expires. We can compare price, look at his price, and look at some other ones. So yeah, that's kind of the gist of this flipping method. Now, obviously, when we're looking at these prices, we're looking at these out of packs cards because they are going to be influenced less by stuff that happens on the game. Now, obviously, if we have a card like, let's say, this Deli Ali card right here, which we've been talking about, and they list up another center attack in mid or center mid special card SBC player from the Prem, uh, you see this dip right here, 220,000 coins. Right when this says yesterday, the day that I'm recording this, um, the Juan Mata flashback SBC came out on this day. So it looks like where he reaches his low point here, Deli Ali was at 220,000 coins, a bit lower than normal because of that Juan Mata SBC, which is an another center attack in mid or center mid in the Prem, which possibly could have caused some panic selling on this card. So there are some fluctuations and there are stuff on the game that could impact these prices. So when you're flipping these cards, you could get hurt a little bit. There, I mean, you're never, you're always assuming risk when you're buying a card and trying to flip it on the market because some other promotion or some other card could come out that makes these card prices change. Um, but that also could bring an opportunity to, to flip cards as well and buy them low in a panic sell and sell them after. So um, again, scream cards are great to do this with if they're um, very meta and overpowered and desired cards because a guy like this Scream from Mino is one of the most sought after cards in the game. He goes from 730 to 760 maybe, seven at his highest, yeah, 760 highs. So there's not a lot of fluctuation room in there as well for tax. But if you got him on a low 700s or maybe 710, 720, you could definitely sell at 750 or 760 and make some decent money on that card. And informs are good to do this with as well, um, especially informs that are valuable that are good links and that people like to use and they're rare because they're, you know, like this Fabinho card, 86 rated. He's not going to get packed a ton, but he's 200K. A lot of people want to get him in their team. So you see he hits 190K uh, today and he bounces right back up. He's still about 200,000 coins. So that'd be like break even if he sold him there for tax. But if you see this guy go to 210K, then uh, during the day, 204, 204, Looks like he doesn't go too much over 200, except for on the weekends. He was up 223 this last weekend. So if you see these cards fluctuate like um, some of the Scream cards we looked at, or some of these Informs as well. Inform Coutinho could be another good one. Obviously today when I'm recording this, we got the Player of the Month Surge Nabry as well. Uh, so that card is causing this one to go up as a green link investment and this card being very rare. But yeah, you can normally see that he fluctuates a decent amount, 335 all the way up to 380. That's some big time money, especially on a very, very rare card like this. Team of the week ones would be very good to do this with as well. Somebody like Mertens, who's a very popular player in this game of FIFA, um, of FIFA Ultimate Team, FIFA 20. He fits the meta, 570 you see here. Let's look at his fluctuations on the daily. What's he do? 535 all the way up to 564, 570 maybe. Yeah, so 570 looks like his peaks. During the day, 535, 525, 559. So again, we're going to have a little bit over 25,000 coins of tax, almost 30K tax if you sell at 570. So what is it, like 20? It's like 20 whatever thousand coins of tax. So um, upper, let's just say 30K of tax. If you can sell them at 570, that means you're going to have to buy them for around the 520 range. So that's a very good card to flip. Again, these early on team of the weeks or team of the weeks that are rare that don't have a lot of supply. Like this team of the week that I'm currently, we are currently having in packs right now, team of the week nine, when I'm recording this, um, nine going would be a very good card to flip. His informs are always very rare, but also sought after. Tellez would be a good flip. Robertson would be a good flip. And Pereira would probably be good flips as well. But definitely these three, even a Lewandowski, because um, just like memorize the prices of these cards in some team of the weeks, get to know their prices, watch them on the market, add them to your watch list and your, and your, 
um, transfer targets and watch and see what they do. So that James did not get bought at 287. 289, again, is his cheapest as we saw. Let's get back here to the 59th. Have there been any undercuts since we last saw? 289 still is the cheapest one on the market with a couple open bids. What about Dimitri Payet? Again, we saw him at like 67. And you can tell how rare these cards are, man. I'm getting to the 59th minute in only a few pages. Even this Payet card, 86 rated, one of the most packed cards from the screen promo. And he's back here, very sellable as a French center attacking mid, links to Ben Yedder. Uh, what's his cheapest one back here? What do we see? We see 70,000. Looks like 70,000 still might be his cheapest. 70,000. Saw a couple open bids there. 70,000 looks to be his cheapest. So maybe you try to find some open bids, add them to your transfer targets. And of course, again, like I see this Hamas Rodriguez right here with the Hunter Chem style, don't uh, forget about the values of chem styles when you're trading with this method. If you get um, a snipe on a player, or let's say Hamas Rodriguez comes up at 260K, you know that you can sell him right around like 280 high or 290 like he is right now, especially if you have a hunter chem style or a shadow chem style on a defender, that's gonna make that card a lot more popular and a lot more uh, people will be, will be willing to pay the price for that card with the popular and the very meta and usable and expensive chem style added to it. So if you're buying a card on a snipe like that with the good chem style, uh, that's a, uh, a good way to look as well. Make sure that you compensate for those chem styles. Don't just go and list up a card and you say, oh shoot, that has a chem style. It could sell for more. So Muller right now is 202 as a CDM. It's not really a CDM card, but it's an interesting position change there. Um, so let's look at his card really quick as the last example, Thomas Muller over on Flippin. And the reason why I'm looking at so many examples with this with you guys is because I want to teach you this. And this is a very, very good method to trade at any time. Honestly, you can get on the market at any time. It's kind of like the same uh, principles as icon trading, but with informs and special cards, you're not going to make as much profit as an icon probably, but you're still going to see a lot of fluctuations. So you saw him today, 195 all the way up to 208. What about on Monday? He went from 198, 195, all the way up again to around 205. So again, we have 10K tax here. So if you could get him for like 190, 180 something on a low time of the hour and then sell him just around 207, like he is right now, 208,000 coins, that would be a good flip on this card. But again, the screen cards are gonna be very good to do this with. And as the road to the final cards continue to go out of packs as well, as these cards get rare, they're gonna be very good to flip with as well. I, I know I haven't mentioned them a lot in this video, but a guy like Juan Jesus, very popular center back card, road to the final version. It's very expensive right now. Um, but this is gonna be a card that would fluctuate a lot in price because it's very, very rare. So as these cards are on the market a little bit more, Definitely watch their um, price movements and fluctuations because this is a card people want to have in their squad as it's a live item. It's upgradable. And um, yeah, people are going to be paying the big bucks for this card and it's going to fluctuate uh, because people like these cards and they want to use them in their team. So the rare cards, and as we get more promos this year, team of the group stage, um, like headliners, future stars, we're gonna, I'm going to be trading like this on this game for the rest of the year because it's a training tra trading method that you guys can do, that we can all do um, at any given time, any point, you sit down, you look at FIFA, you say, I wanna make some coins, I wanna trade. This can be a go-to method, one of the best ways that you guys can trade and have fun with some of these special cards on the market. So if you enjoyed this video, smash a thumbs up on it and comment down below if you have any questions and to also subscribe to the channel if you are new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.